Welcome, welcome everybody, I am the air quotes comedian, an anarchist with an anatomically correct microphone stand, and this is the polemics, welcome. What? What about a microphone stand? Fuck off. I couldn't be asked to actually write something funny or that made sense there because, well, I've got shit to get to. It's the right shape, so don't worry about it. Nobody cares. I thought, I need to shove something out there just to show I'm still alive, but what to talk about? What, in 2024, is really the only pressing concern of the day? Perhaps the ongoing genocide in Gaza, Yemen, South Sudan, Sudan, Iraq, Myanmar, and on and on. Community standards being what they are will let me say cunt all day long, but when it comes to the call of action, I would suggest I'm literally cuffed. Well, let's have an amble down Ambient Lane, which isn't an excuse for me to start lobbing anti-Semitic slurs, but remember, folks, it's not anti-Semitic to despise Ben Shatiro. Jews can be cunts as well as anybody else. But I digress and restrained myself from casting aspersions on Shatiro's gender. This time, I'm growing as a person, but not by any observable or quantifiable metrics because those suggest I'm rapidly losing mass and slowly losing my height as well. But I digress. What is to be done? What can we do? What should we do? Is it wise to take advice from a comedian who thinks baked beans on toast is a fine entree? Thank you very much. So what do I think? What do I chinny reckon? I think we should all get comically oversized foam mallets, you know, ones not made from AK-47s, 500 rounds of ammunition, and an almost holy moral and unfalsifiable righteousness, and with our oversized foam mallets, pay a visit to the state and make our feelings known. And where would I find the edifice of the state with which to make my feelings known with my comically oversized foam mallet, one that isn't made with a glass bottle full of gasoline and fairy liquid, and the unquenchable desire to destroy the oppressor of earth? Where, oh where, Mr. Air Quotes Comedian, will I find that? Fucking look around me, it's fucking everywhere, innit? From the courthouse to the cop shop to the corporate storefronts and the clown shoes that sits atop it all in the Capitol buildings. Or literal fucking castles and palaces, if you can believe that crap. Can you believe it? In this day, can you fucking believe it? Where's Victor Meldrew when you need him? <clears throat> if your takeaway from that last bit was, all right, you can't do a Victor Meldrew impression then, then I'd just like to say that you're my kind of people. I have noticed on the social media that a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, everybody's saying it. Okay, not everybody, but some people are saying it. So not a lot of people are saying it, but a few people are saying it. They're saying, aren't they? They say, sure, Biden is aiding and abetting a genocide in plain sight, but you have to hold your nose and vote for him because otherwise we will get, and it will be all your fault because you didn't vote. As I recently replaced my guitar, I decided to respond to this line of argument with a song. Oh, why don't you fuck the whole way off? Thanks. Let's get this fucking straight so everybody understands my position on the matter because I can only speak for myself. Personally, let me preface that by confessing to you, dear viewer, in the privacy and sanctity of this whatever you would call this, that I don't actually like saying the names of the people who populate the positions within the state because it really doesn't matter unless you're a sniper. Are you a sniper, dear viewer? No, you're not. I didn't always have this aversion, but the crimes and sheer disgustingness, moral vacuum and the bravery of their endless lies have become so blatant and blasé as to make me wretch when I utter their monikers. So, that was the preface before my statement on the position of the matter, which is, it doesn't matter who was where when things happened, or even what they did to some extent, because the action was prescribed before it was ever taken as a matter of policy that doesn't change between Team Blue and Team Red. You can scream at me all day long until you're blue in the face that there are objective differences in the two, but you'll find I've got my fingers in my ears and I'm humming very loudly and inexplicably, or perhaps explicably, I have an erection. Technically, Trump hasn't committed a genocide, and so logically, if one were to vote, then it should stand to reason that one should vote for him. Except, excuse me, but that doesn't stand to fucking reason at all, does it? Because if he'd been in the White House on October 7th, his response, or lack thereof, would probably have been worse. My point is, I'm right, you're wrong, the few people who I am talking about, and you're mum. 
you might have noticed that this episode of The Polemics is essentially a shitpost. Not the bit where I suggest that if you vote for Biden, or anyone, that you're just lost. You've put your seal of approval on genocide. You are lost, my friend. Palestine, Yemen, Sudan, Iraq, Syria, and on and on and ongoing genocide going on now. Right now. I might not actually be able to do much about any of it, but I'm not going to shut up about it until it stops. A stoppage to genocide shouldn't be a fucking fever dream, should it? But what the fuck am I talking about? We live on a planet that has a literal fucking monarch's ruling parts of it. Seems like we'll put up with just about any old shit, isn't it? Oh, beans on toast for tea again, mum. Yum, yum. Nah, that's brilliant. I love beans on toast, really. That's it for this even worsely written episode of The Polemics, despite my promises in the last one. Yeah, never trust somebody who likes beans on toast. Please don't subscribe to this channel and don't touch the buttons. Mess with the metrics, that's the kinds of things I like to do.